All right, today's goal is to fit all of this into this. Hopefully it shouldn't be too terribly complicated. Um, the Super Nintendo's got quite a bit of room in it, so we should be able to do it without too many hiccups. I've got everything planned out pretty well, I think. Um, all it takes is to put it all together. The goal today is to get everything set up so that we have a working Super Famicom um, that runs a Raspberry Pi. We want to keep the outsides as stock looking as possible, meaning we're going to be able to use the original ports up front for the controllers. And I'm going to go ahead and stick with the AV out as well. Um, I know it's not the most HD resolution that you'd be able to get out of the Raspberry Pi, um, but I like the idea of being able to plug it in just like you would um, and use everything as you should. So you plug in the um, multi-out port here straight into the AV of your TV and go from there. Um, I'm also looking to use the same barrel jack here for power. I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to wire everything up to use the power and resets as well. Um, I've never done that sort of thing before though, so it may take some trial and error, but um, let's go ahead and crack into it. First things first, we got to empty out the existing shell um, so that we can make sure that we have enough room to do what it is that we're looking to do. So let's go ahead and get on with it. There are a few things um, that we would like to save from this board um, so that we can try to keep everything as original looking as possible. Um, so we do need to take off the cartridge port here um, so that we can screw that down in the case so that it'll still be functional um, if we have enough room. We will also need to take off the reset button here as well. We're going to need to desolder um, these two pins here and unscrew this here so that we can get this back panel out um, to be able to use in our setup. With that as well, we are going to have to desolder the multi out um, here. So first things first, let's see if we are able to get the um, that barrel jack out. All right, so I got everything cleaned up. Um, so what we're left with is the uh, main shroud for the power and the audio. Um, we're not gonna have anything. I might wire up a USB to hang out here, but we're not gonna have anything um, for these two ports here. Um, but we're gonna have our power in through the barrel jack here, and then the uh, multi out will still sit where it should here. Um, just slides under there and pops out through the back. Um, with that, I did get some prototype boards. Um, this luckily has the same pitch that we're looking for. So we'll be able to just snap this in here, solder that up. I wanted something with a bit of meat on it. Um, if I can get this in frame better, there we go. Um, I wanted something with a bit of meat on it so that we would have a proper mount for this. Um, it does look like I'm gonna have to run over to my Dremel and Dremel out some bits of this, um, just so that there's not any interference when screwing this down. Um, but I definitely want something with some heft to be able to um, attach to these joints here um, so that we have the audio and video out through there. Um, I also figured that it works as a great way to um, space out for this here. Um, 
almost got that dead on. Um, but this will allow us to add and remove SD cards um, without having to go through a lot of fluff or anything um, opening up the case. So we'll be mounting this right here, which is where the um, extension port pops out on the bottom of the case. So this will just pop out. It'll be easily readily accessible if we want to change out what image we're running. Um, so we're going to start off, um, I guess I'm going to run over to um, my Dremel real quick. Sadly, it's out of frame and I don't have the ability to bring it where I am. Um, but I'm going to run over to the Dremel real quick and um, Dremel out those pieces and then jump back in. We'll do a little bit of a soldering montage. Um, we're going to have to open this up so that we can solder the connections from the Mayflash adapter directly to the pinouts here. Um, and then we'll be able to wire the USB back into the Pi. So it should be pretty simple. So when I come back, it'll be just a little bit of a soldering montage, and then we'll go from there. All right, so I started the video montage of me soldering, and I don't know what happened to the footage, um, but the camera shut down and it is gone. But I have already soldered up the multi out, so we'll be able to get AV out of the uh, Raspberry Pi. Next up, we're going to go ahead and tackle the um, controller port here. Um, I opened up the adapter that I bought off of Amazon here, and it's going to be a lot simpler to do than I originally thought. Um, so first things first, let's start by trying to get some of, well, get all of these off so that we can um, connect things up to the original port. So let's get this all buttoned up and assuming it all goes together well, then we will cut to some um, proper gameplay. 